Hello everyone, this is Misam Mehr Avaran. I'm going to have a quick introduction on Chemkin for you guys. Uh, first, I'll go through a small introduction. Uh, what are we? We are Ozen Engineering. We sell ANSYS products. We provide customer support. We conduct trainings for you guys. And we do consulting in structural analysis, fluids, optics, high and low frequency, electronics, semiconductor, system embedded software and whatever you name it probably we have a tool for it as we are a very big company as a part of ANSYS family. Uh, here's the Kemkin as you see I have a project open but to make it easier I start building a new project from scratch. I'll name it test. As you see uh, Chemkin is pretty much a 0D or 1D tool. You have a lot of 1D and 0D components in it. You have inlet, outlet, equilibrium. You have a piston cylinder, which is a closed volume. You have reactors, which are mostly 0D, which means that they are just one node and you can have temperature and pressure at different times, either steady state or transient. And you have open reactors, you have flow reactors, you have flame simulation, which is 1D, uh, which is a domain in which uh, flame propagates in one direction. And you have CVD rotational reactors, which are surface reactors. You have shock tube reactors and also LPCVD, which is another type of reactor, mostly uh, with flow reactions on the surface. Here, we just started with a simple test, which is a uh, input, or inlet source, a product which is like an outlet and also the flame and we simply connect them together. As I mentioned, uh, Kempkin is mostly 0D or 1D and it's very simple, it doesn't have 3D in it. Uh, after putting the components together, it could be very complicated, but this is very simple to start with. If you update the project, as I mentioned, we named it test. Then we go to pre-processing. We define a working directory for it. So we can do, let's say we select this folder and say, okay, this is where would be the working directory. Uh, the other important uh, factor that we need is a chemistry set. You could either choose it if you have something already saved. For example, CKS file that we have here is the set. Uh, we can just use, or we can create a new one. New test set. That's how we name it, for example. So you have two or three files for this, which needs to be included. Uh, you need the kinetic or chemistry file, which has different uh, reactions or different sub-reactions that happen. Uh, you have a thermodynamic data file, which has thermodynamic properties such as enthalpy or entropy, etc. And also you need the transport data such as diffusion coefficients, which uh, in most of the cases can be defined using the leonard jones potentials and distances. Here, for example, we go to samples, we have some default files inside the chemical library uh, for very typical problems. And also we have some stuff, uh, some files, including this data available uh, on UC Berkeley website. And also if you wanna go further, uh, there is something called MFL or model fuel library that you can purchase. It's a separate license, which has the uh, characteristics and uh, thermodynamic properties and all those and needed information for very complicated fuels. Let's say hydrocarbons such as gas or diesel, which is a mixture of hundreds of hydrocarbons. Uh, here, just to start with, I go to flame speed. I go to this folder and I see what we have. Uh, for example, for chemistry file we, or kinetic file, we use the SD chem. For the 
surface kinetic file, we don't need anything because it's not a surface reaction. And for the thermodynamic properties, we create this, we choose this file. And then for the transport data, there is file, but I think this is 1D, so we need it. And we can even give a name to it or save it as a chemistry set. We save it as, let's say test set. Then we run the post processor. It gives no error, which means everything is fine. Uh, just to make it easier, if you look at these files, uh, this is empty, let's say how they look like. If you look at the kinetic file, it pops open here. You see there is a bunch of reactions and these are all the RNA's coefficients. So you have the rate of reaction for all of these. Then if you look at the thermodynamic properties file, you see it's a bunch of coefficients for each species. Uh, for example, for N2, we have all these coefficients that these are the coefficients of a polynomial that based on that, you would be able to calculate enthalpy and also the entropy for that species. And also the transport, it includes uh, for different species, the Leonard George coefficients and potentials based on which you would be able to calculate the diffusion coefficients. I think you're done here, so we close it and then we see that the uh, other parts have been activated. So you see that workflow is mostly active now. Now we can populate the components here. You see you have a flame speed here, you have an inlet and you have the product, which we don't need to define anything for it. You go to the flame speed. Uh, there are some factors that needs to be defined in it. Mostly those are highlighted and written bold as you see here. The ones which are not required are written regular in the regular font. We need a temperature, let's say we say 300K and I don't think we need anything else. We need pressure, which is let's say 280 ATM. I think we should be all set. We don't need anything else here. And this is the ending actual position. As I mentioned, this one is a 1D problem. So you want to see what is the length of the burner. I would say 10 centimeter, just something to put in. And I think that would be it. The other one would be the inlet. When you go to inlet, you create the species and also you create how much is the inlet velocity or the mass flow rate. And then after that, you solve it because this needs some other coefficients to be put in it and we didn't really have that much of a time for that. So I go to a same model, which is just already populated. And as you see here, properties are there. Inlet is there. And we just go to solve. Solver is there. You don't need to change any parameters in it. I think the output controls, you don't need to change it. If you want to export something in an Excel format or any other specific format, you can define it here. Continuations in it when you have different uh, iterations, let's say you have different input temperatures or input pressure, you can define those as continuations and then you just go to run. As you see, this is running and it's all done. It's very quick because it's just a 1D problem. Uh, so now we wanna see the results. To see the results, you can't do it in Campion Pro, so it automatically goes to visualizer as you see the icon here. I click on it. It popped open in the other window. I'll bring it to this window. Uh, so you can plot the values here. Let's say uh, along the distance or the length of the burner, you want to see how it's the mole fractional N2. 
H2 or, or O2. Say create plot and it pops open here. So you see how this species uh, concentration would change along the burner. As I mentioned, the lens was 10 centimeter, we defined it. In some cases, when you have a list of continuations or you can define a third axis, you can even contour plots, but here it was a very simple problem, so you can't create it because we don't have three uh, independent variables here. So the next one is the animal's reaction path. This is mostly for defining the reaction path. This would be something nice in the reports that you have. This is what shows that how you started from the inputs and you went into the products. This uh, starts like from H2, you went to H2O and H2O2 and all the way to other products in the sub-mechanisms and finally into the final product. If you look at the thickness of the line, it shows the rotor reaction. For example, as you see, it's a very small number. It's 1.54 E minus 55. And these are which are a bit thicker, uh, are a bit faster reactions. As you see, it happens at the value of 2.42 E minus 21, which is much higher than the other ones. I think that was most uh, what we need to know. And uh, these are very helpful because uh, when you go to a tool like uh, Fluent, you need to know the list of important reactions that happen, and then you can solve for those in 3D inside Fluent. As I mentioned, this is just a 0D, 1D tool, but it's very powerful in predicting the right mechanisms and the right number of mechanisms and the rates at which they're occurring. And one of the other capabilities that it can do, it can reduce the number of mechanisms. Uh, for example, combustion could be hundreds of mechanisms. You need to bring it down to maybe 40, 50, and you want to get rid of the non-important or very slow ones. In that case, you'll save some computational uh, costs and you can run the case much faster. You can do that by going to the reaction workbench. As you see here, it's like uh, an add-on. You can go between reaction workbench and ChemCam Pro back and forth quite easily. You just click on it. Uh, as you see, when it opens, it tells you if you want to do the mechanism reduction. Uh, initially, you define a working directory. The problem, for example, this was the Mason burner, the one I just created before and the target would be the same and you just go to tabs one by one next one you go to the method for reduction of the mechanisms the recommended ones are drgep and also drg but if you like you can use other methods too i don't think we need to add it but it's very easy then you go to the next one, which is you decide what is the target parameters. Imagine for this specific mechanism, you're interested in just concentration of C2H2 and also the max temperature that you'll be having. So you choose those. If there are other parameters which are important to you, you can choose them too. It's very simple and straightforward, but we start with these two. The next step would be that you find tolerances and you say that I want to have the concentration of C2H2 uh, uh, with maybe max 10% error and I want to get the temperature predicted with max 10 or any other percentage, let's say 12% error. It's totally up to you. Let's keep it as it is. And uh, you can see if you're interested in endpoint maximum or the profile. I would say for concentration, I look at the endpoint, and for temperature, I look at the maximum. Then you go to the next tab. I think this will be automatically populated. And then you go to the iteration one. 
Uh, so you choose these methods and start to iterate. When you go to run iteration, uh, it will start running. And uh, finally, for example, starting from 46 species in the master mechanism, you'll decrease to just 10 species in the reduced mechanism. And the next step would be, as you see, you have the final result, which is shown here. And as the last step, it uh, gives you the option to save it uh, and use it for more comprehensive 3D simulations. Uh, for example, after we save that, we can bring that into Fluent. I have just a sample Fluent file, as you see here. I mean, don't care about the problem itself. If you go to Fluent, you go to Species and activate the Species Transport. As you see here, you can import the uh, Chemkin mechanism. Uh, so long story short, you do the mechanism and uh, chemical study and optimization inside Chemkin and then to do a 3D study, you bring that optimized and uh, inexpensive uh, mechanism uh, into 3D solver like Fluent. Okay, thank you for your time and your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, thanks again and uh, looking forward to working with you guys. Have a great day. Bye.